on the end of each row, there are bulletins under a stone, in case anyone didn't already find them. Just so you know. I don't know how many of you were at General Conference for the Act of Repentance, but it was amazing because you had 1,000 people who made it very clear that they can't agree about anything gather around a beautiful and symbolic expression of forgiveness and trust and hope. And they did it with stones, much like this one, although this one's very um, pretty and well painted. But they did it around natural stones, and all 1,000 delegates and many of the other participants were encouraged to take a stone with them and to remember that moment and, and to use it as guidance for, for how they may be called to lead our church towards, towards a path of forgiveness and a path of reconciliation. And so here we are, the social, the social justice wing of our church, and we're gathered here for this special worship service to recognize that call for each of us as individuals and as a general board of church and society that has a unique and special calling and place in our church and in our world. For this service, we will, we will hear Native stories. We have already heard beautiful Native music. And together, we will join in a worship experience that can lead us into a more beautiful future and a more just church. May I ask you to stand if you are able? Join me in reading this responsive reading, Call to the Journey. Once upon a time, a wise man offered a challenge. One what is the greatest commandment? The calendars on our desks <coughs> share a vision of greatness, bills to pay, phone calls to return, appointments to keep. Love the Lord your God. The snapshots of our memories share what commands us. Children to bathe and partners to help. Parents calling and grandchildren hopeful. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Still, the Spirit lures us to new priorities, new pathways, open spaces to experience wonder, new journeys to experience strangers becoming friends, relationships connected and built devotion to that which transcends, allied with the Creator's vision. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. And when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Of these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. May God's Spirit touch the hearts and minds of all those who have heard these words today. Amen. It was a day, it was a good day. And the woman who we call she who is known to be wise, was outside. She was working in her garden and she worked long and hard. And from our village came a young boy. He stopped right in front of she who was known to be wise. Excuse me, grandmother, but I was wondering, I'm going to the ceremonial grounds and I was wondering, can you tell me how long it's going to take me to get there? Grandson, I do not know how long it will take you to get to the ceremonial ground. All right, 
I thought you knew a lot, but since you don't know, I'm headed on down that way. Grandson, And that young boy, he started walking, and she who was known to be wise, she was watching as he walked. And in a moment, she stepped out, and she called out, Grandson, Grandson, it will take you two hours to get to the ceremonial grounds. He stopped, he turned around, he said, Grandmother, I just asked you a moment ago, and you said you didn't know how long it would take me. What changed? Grandson, it is easy. I didn't know how fast you were walking. <laughs> It's good, yes? Well, we're talking about the journey to repentance. You see, each of you are putting your feet on the path, and you're beginning the journey. But only you can decide how long it will take you. Only you can decide your heart's desire. Some of you will get there quickly. Some of you will take your time. And some of you will turn and walk the other way. It depends on your heart and the way that you walk and the way you see and feel things. And that is that. The leaves had already begun to fall. They were falling all around us. And the wind was moving within the village. And you see the people in the village, they were very, very busy. For there was so much work to do in such little time because soon the freezing moons would come upon us. And already our days had grown shorter, and so the people were busy. But in this village, there was an elder, and his name was Griffin. He was a well-respected elder, not only in our villages, but the villages beyond. For you know, he was known for his strength. He was known for his love and his wisdom. He was known for his great generosity. It was said that he always gave the best that he had, even if he did not know your name. If he gave to you, it would be the best. But things have changed for Griffin. You see, in this last year, his wife had fallen ill. And there was no medicine to heal her, and she died. That was a tragedy. But you see, that same illness had fell upon his four children, and yet there was no medicines, and they too died. His only sister and all of his brothers died, and now Griffin, stood in a village filled with people, but he was alone. He was all alone. Oh, not because the people did not care about him, because they did. But you see, it is easier not to see another and go on with your own life Griffin was now thin and frail, and he moved really slow. And every morning he struggled, and he rose, and he stepped out of those flats from his lodge, and he gave thanks to the one, to the only, and then he did the work that he could do to contribute to his people. Every day, some of them would walk by, and they would say, oh, see old Griffin, how are you today? And Griffin would say, oh, see old, and he would begin to speak. But the people moved on, for they had much work to do. 
to Mary Stewart. When dusk fell upon us, and each family went back to their lodge, and they shared a meal together, and they laughed together, and they made new memories, and they remembered old ones, Griffin went back to his lodge alone all alone and he pushed open the flaps and he went inside and it was empty except for memories and then he would lay down and those memories would wrap around him and crush his heart for he wanted only one thing he wanted someone to reach out their hand and touch him, someone to embrace him and make him remember that he was important. But no one did, for there was much work to do, and we were busy. On this day, the sun rose. And the flats of his lodge did not open. But no one noticed. No one saw. And when the sun was high in the sky, he stepped out. And he carried with him a blanket. The blanket that he had used for many, many giveaways but he had nothing left to give. He held that blanket tight to him, and he lifted his face to the land of the sky, and he began to pray. He prayed a prayer so powerful that you could not hear it nor I. Only the one that needed to hear could. And with a nod of his head, he understood. And he opened that blanket. And he spread that blanket out. And he stepped in the middle. And he stood. And he lifted his face to the land of the sky. And he began to pray, and the tears fell. And with a nod of his head, he knew what he was to do. And he slipped off his moccasins, and he placed them neatly on the blanket. And he lifted his face yet again, and he prayed. And with a nod of his head, he removed his shirt. And he laid it neatly upon that blanket. And the wind came and it cut into his skin. And he shivered. But not from the cold on the outside, but from the cold that had grown inside of his spirit from being alone. And he lifted his face and the tears fell. And he prayed with all of his Drink. and a nod of his head he knew what to do he slipped off his pants he folded them and left them neatly upon the others and he stood in the middle of the blanket as naked as a newborn babe and he simply said who wants this old man who takes this old man who adopts me? My hands are gnarled with age. I cannot move, but my heart is good. Who takes me as their own? And nobody came. Nobody came. And yet he lifted his face and he said to the one, to the only, do you adopt me as your own? Take me home to be with my family. Do you not?
not want me. Who wants this old man? Who takes me? It's their own. <laughs> In front of the lodge, one small child looked up and she saw a griffin and she said, Mama, Mama. And when the woman looked, her heart filled with shame, her eyes filled with tears and she grabbed a blanket and she ran with all and she stood on the left side of him. She wrapped the blanket around him in the sign of adoption. And she said, we take this one as our own. We adopt them into our family. But it didn't end there. For every villager looked and they saw Griffin and their hearts filled with shame and their eyes filled with tears and they grab those blankets and they wrap them around him and say this one we take of our own this one we call family until everyone stood behind him and the procession began and the songs began and griffin never went home alone again because he was adopted into the entire village and he was loved and cared for until the last day when he was wrapped in that blanket and sent on that final journey the church has spoken many words. The people of the church speak many words. But when you wrap a blanket around and you say, this one we take of our own, this one we care for as family is more than words. On the day that our people stood on the shores, and those who came across the great waters landed. Our people greeted them. We taught them where to build their lodges, where to find fresh water, how to plant and live in our land. We adopted them as our own. And on the day they had their first giving of thanks, our people brought many gifts. But one day, they took those blankets of adoption and they ripped them in half and threw them to the side. And they no longer were a part of our family. We are the people who walk among you. We are the ones that easier not to see. We are the ones who have been forgotten. Have you forgotten us? I ask you to think about this. Are you ready to bring your blankets? Are you ready to adopt a people as one family? And know that when you do, you give up because you love more of them than yourselves. And that story is finished. We have one last story to tell you. 
And he's going to teach you how to say yes in uh, my native sign, just like this. Like this. Two fingers. Our people know it's very rude <coughs> to point. You'll see us use two fingers or a whole hand in many tribes all into our face. <laughs> um, but we know that it was not something we did. And so we end with this story. And the reason why we chose this story is very important. All of us remember. Chief T. Norwood, he was a mighty chief. He was a powerful man, but you would never know it when you met him. He met you as his best friend. And he was our chief, and, and he did good things for us. And he always laughed. And the story we tell today honors him because in a few short weeks it will be the passing of him for the fourth year, and we remember. And this was his favorite story. He loved this story, and in the end you understand. So Chief, in the peaceful tribe of the people, there lived a young girl. Her name was Gentle Tom, and she loved none other than Black Bear. Woo! And to their great joy and in the custom of our people, the marriage was arranged. It was ready. In four days, they would be married. But you see, two rival tribes had broken a sacred code of honor and a battle arose. And all of the men from the village was called to go to battle including <coughs> And Gentle Dove followed the man, and she stood high, and she watched as the man of the village left. And as she watched, she began to pray. And she waited, and she watched, and she prayed. And when the nighttime sky fell upon us, she would go back and she would rest and she would rise before the red star and she would do her work of the day and then she would run to that spot and she would watch and wait and pray for the men to return. This is how it was day after day until the morning that her and Black Bear were to be united as one. She rose earlier. She cleansed her body in her sacred herbs and she dressed in her ceremonial gown. And she went to that spot and she stood and walked and waited and she prayed all day. The women would come, they would say, drink, eat. She would have none of that. She would only stand there and watch. For she knew he was a man of his word, and he would keep his promise in return. At dusk, she saw in a distance the men. She called to the women, and they all began to run. They ran as quick as they could, and they found their husbands and brothers, their sons and fathers. Gentle Dove pushed her way through until she came to the back. And on the back, they carried the truth. And there lay her man. They lowered him to the earth and she looked at him. And she said, I promise I will never love another. I will take only you as my husband. I give my word. I give my heart. And when she made that promise, he told them, come, let the ceremony begin. They said the old vows of the people, they drank from the cup of life. It was broken. She dreamed of their future and their children. The people began to celebrate 
But from the north there came a rumble like thunder. It was the wind of time. And the wind of time stopped right in front of Black Bear and wrapped around <coughs> him and pulled his breath from him and loaded him up onto the back of his horse and carried him to the place beyond. Gentle dove could not believe this. Her heart was broken. She was a strong woman and she rose. She helped bury her man. She kept her promise and never took another husband. She remained in her village. She wove beautiful baskets. She listened and watched and kept quiet. And with each day, she grew wiser and wiser until she had a seat at the council fire. But every year, on the anniversary of her marriage, on the death of her husband, she would cleanse herself early before the sun rose, dress in her ceremonial gown, and there she would walk alone to his final resting place. And she would pray the prayers of a mighty warrior woman. She would pray that the people had wisdom, that the people learn to truly love. She would pray that one day her spirit would be united with Black Bear. And then she would begin to weep. And she could not stop weeping until his grave was covered with her tears. And then she would go back. She lived to be a mighty old elder. But one night the wind of time came like a rumble of thunder and took her breath away and lifted her and carried her on. As is the custom of our people, the women came, they cleansed her body, they dressed her in her ceremonial gown, and they began to carry her to her final resting place. When they lowered her to the earth, they found stones that they had never seen in the travels of their moccasins before. And when they lifted the stones, they knew that these were the petrified tears of gentle time, of a mighty warrior woman. They placed them into their pouches and headed back. Soon they realized that they pulled the stone and they believed in her strength and her love. Calmness would come over them, a peace would surround them. Soon everyone sought out her tears until they'd been scattered across this mighty turtle island. <coughs> Everyone knew the story, but so many years have passed, people have forgotten, and now they call them worry stones. But after today, you know the true meaning of those stones. The true meaning. When our chief heard this story, we were handing out stones. He sought out the stone that spoke to him. He picked it up in his hands and he said, I remember my people. I remember the pain. I pray for peace. And he slipped it into his pocket and he carried it for more than 20 years. You see, when he was dying and we surrounded him day after day with love, he would call for that stone to be laid in his hand and he would hold on to that stone. For our people, stone, grandfather stone, first storyteller, still telling stories today. Stones, we dig deep in the earth after we ask for permission and we pull a stone from our homelands and place it into our pouch and we carry it with us everywhere so we will not forget where we have come from. And on this day, we held that stone in his breath we knew. When he would breathe out, we would breathe in 
we would suck in his spirit and we would promise to him we make a promise to continue your work of good and he would take in a breath and he would send our spirit so he knew that we were still with him until that last moment when the rumble of thunder and the wind of time came and wrapped around him and whoop, took away his breath, hoisted him onto that horse and carried him away. Stones are powerful things for our people. They still tell stories. On today, when you leave, we have a gift for you. <coughs> we have made you heart stones so that you will remember a mighty chief and a mighty warrior woman. <coughs> and remember that our people look at stones in a very special way. These are our story stones. They carry the stories of our people. The smudging, if you have not participated in this before, is a time of cleansing and purification that Native people use. And oftentimes you'll see them take their shoes off so that they are one with the earth. And, um, and as we do this, we'll be doing it um, collectively, not individually um, today. So we'll be walking Sue Ann and I around uh, the tent. Um, and the smudging is, uh, as the sage or sweet grass, we have sweet grass grow here, and we have sage and we have cedar. Uh, as we burn that, and we wave it with a prayer, uh, prayer feather, those um, prayers are going up to Creator God. <laughs> those prayers are going up, and so as you are in an attitude of prayer during this time, your prayers are being sent up, and you are being cleansed and purified. And then, um, as one Native elder says, after after you do the smudging or you're in the sweat lodge, you come out pretty pure. He says, you come out pretty pure. And uh, following that, we'll move right into communion so that we might take that purification ritual through into um, our experience and our, our deep felt um, ritual of communion. So will you be in an attitude of prayer?
This journey continues. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts, your hands, your passion. We lift them up to the Lord. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and a joyous prayer always and everywhere to give you thanks, O God. For in the beginning, you are Creator God. You made the earth round, rich, and fertile the mother of all life, the seedbed of all growth. You bent low and gently gathered up a handful of clay and shaped wonderfully, intricately, to make man and woman. You breathed wind and spirit into flesh and bone and spoke through the ages in the lives and voices of saints and prophets. Moses and Miriam, Deborah and Isaiah, Jeremiah and Sarah, Mary and Elizabeth, Paul and Stephen, and all the men, women, and children in Holy Scripture, Benedict and Francis, Wesley and Otterbine, Susanna Wesley and Susan B. Anthony, Thomas Mergen and Martin Luther King Jr., Dorothy Day and Howard Thurman, Mother Teresa and Gandhi, Vine Deloria and Harmon Ray, Archbishop Romero and Rosa Parks, Brother Roger and Obispo Maximo Alberto Romento. We became like you, formed in your image, carrying the stars in our eyes, the moon in our heart, and the cosmos in every breath. You touched us with goodness and beauty, yet we resisted your touch and tried to shape ourselves. So we have become chipped by greed, cracked by injustice, broken with grief. But again and again you send your spirit to renew us and the earth, to gather our brokenness and despair into new hope, and to turn us into an alleluia. And so with the saints who have gone before, and all creatures of the earth, and all the faithful touched by your spirit, we praise your name and join the unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy are you. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Loving God, in the fullness of time, you sent your, us your best. You gave us Jesus, who dared to feed the hungry and welcome the outcast, who healed the sick and challenged the privileged, who announced that the new reign of love had begun. He promised to send the Spirit told us we would not be alone and continues to say peace be with you and on the night he gathered his friends together he took the bread the staff of life the blessing of the sun and gave thanks and broke the bread and gave it to them saying this is my body broken and given for you and then he took the cup the fruit of the earth, the blessing of the rain. He gave a prayer of thanks and gave it to them, saying, this wine is life poured out for you and for many, a sign of forgiveness and of new covenant. As often as you eat this bread, and as often as you drink from this cup, Jesus said, remember me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer our own lives in union with Christ. Christ is God, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. O wind and breath of God, send your dove of peace to our world and to us gathered here. Send your spirit to renew a broken and hurting earth to reveal the paths of hope, to set us afire with joy and justice. Strengthen your church to be witnesses to all the world, and may this meal be a sweet taste of that time to come when the Spirit will gather people from all corners of the earth, and we will sit in peace and harmony. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, 
one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence as children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. The bread so generously given is now broken generously for you. And the cup that holds the blood that shall be spilled for you, we now share with one another as a reminder that we are on that journey begun ages ago and continue to this day. I invite you as God's Spirit moves you to come and to feast from these gifts. A gluten-free option will be available for those of you who require or desire. But come with God's Spirit and join us in this journey of faith.
we are going to join in a moment um, <coughs> to read together the statement that's been printed in the bulletin. But I hope you understand that we are continuing on a journey. We continue on a journey that was begun in some instances uh, at General Conference. But it's a journey that's been begging to be started in the life of all of us across the globe, wherever we are. I believe that the more we pray about this journey and the more courageous stories we hear about the pebbles along the path in this journey, we become wiser, more diligent, more aware, and more committed. And so we knelt together in this fulfillment of our call, our call to be the General Board of Church and Society, and our call to be human persons who love and respect all others, and who continue the pathway toward true reconciliation. Will you join me in fulfilling our call together? The General Board of Church and Society shall relate the Gospel of Jesus Christ to the members of the Church and to the persons and structures of the communities and world in which they live. It shall seek to bring the whole of human life, activities, possessions, use of resources, and community and world relationships into conformity with the will of God. It shall show the members of the church and the society that the reconciliation that God effected through Christ involves personal, social, and civic righteousness. As a body of Christ, we seek repentance and reconciliation with all of God's people. Today, we name those who have come before us, the indigenous, the native, the American Indian, and we seek to use our mandate to be in right relationship with you and each other by naming, acting, and reconciling ourselves, or by our relationships with you. We seek to be in right relationship with our brothers and sisters of different cultures and different faiths. In your name, with prayer, and we seek forth on the journey. Amen.